have been a nice sight, not one to take it easily, and certainly no accidents. Why not? Who would go wandering about the fields near Moran Manor at this early hour of the day? The question is, why should any student from this college be anywhere near, near there anyway? If you ask so many questions, you must give some answers too. Tell me, Mr. Holmes, are you good at fencing? Only if necessary. Is it necessary now? Give him your foil, Vivian. Really, Miss Carla. Miss Evans! Sorry. Miss Evans, isn't it a bit early for this kind of sports? <laughs> I am surprised. Everyone knows that you are the best fencer in all England. How could you try to teach Miss Carlyle in front of us, you You are right. Very idle and arrogant of me. Miss Carlyle, thank you for lending me your weapon. Miss Evans, we will finish this conversation later. Lady Helen, will you please accompany me to Miss Ritz? But I've got a dancing lesson. I think this is more important. And kindly give back the record to me. It is a piece of evidence. Ladies, you all know that everybody here remains innocent until his or her guilt has been proved. I'm just collecting facts, putting together a picture which will then show the truth. Are any of you afraid of the truth? The headmistress will be glad to hear any news, I'm sure. <clears throat> Home, soul chap. Ladies, how nice to see you. see you and how nice to be here. I've got brilliant news, Holmes. You can return home to Baker Street. Scotland Yard has succeeded where you have failed. The missing girl, Lady Margaret, has returned unharmed. Constable Oates has succeeded where the famous Sherlock Holmes has failed. Lady Margaret was discovered by this brave and disciplined country constable. Constable, please report what happened. I was on my way here to meet the inspector on the country road from Crowborough to Holden's Hall. I suddenly saw a girl walking along the road. So I stopped and asked who she was. She was the missing girl, Lady Margaret. She didn't seem weak, only a bit confused. So I brought her here as fast as I could, called the doctor and informed the inspector. We all have to thank this invaluable constable. You see, Holmes, nothing has happened to the girl, and we will soon know what happened at all. Apparently, there wasn't a crime and no mystery to clear up. You can return home to London and leave all the rest to me. Perhaps we should listen to the girl's story first, Inspector. And there has been a murder. Don't forget that. Perhaps it was a murder. Perhaps an accident. The evidence is not quite clear. It is rather evident to me that the two events aren't connected at all. But how the heck, by Watson? The Inspector is of course right. There are more things that we don't know than facts we can be sure of. This is what I call a mystery. <coughs> My stepdaughter has returned. That is all that counts for us. And apparently the death of Dr. Wagner is not connected with her temporary disappearance. I can only say how happy I am that she's returned, and I would not do anything which might endanger her safety again. Again? Anyway, your stupid investigation can cease here. The police are perfectly capable to solve any problems which may still occur. And peace can return to this place. No scandal. Only a mysterious death. Oh, you're right. A new German teacher must be found and employed. Indeed, I have not thought of it yet. Shouldn't we hear Lady Margaret's story? <laughs> Her daughter must have had a hard time. Can she not have a rest before you roast her? Nobody is going to roast your daughter, Your Grace. But Holmes is right here. Questions must be asked as soon as possible, as long as the memory is still fresh. I agree. She must be able to tell her story as long as she remembers it perfectly well. Listen carefully, my dear Watson. This is elementary. So, darling Margaret, tell these ladies and gentlemen what happened to you between Monday evening and today when Constable Oates picked you up on the street. I am sorry that I have caused so much trouble and anxiety. 
especially to my family and also to the authorities at school. It was not my intention to be troublesome. I was somewhat thoughtless and adventurous. Hear that, Holmes! Thank you, Miss Trey, perfectly. <laughs> I had been watching the gypsies on Colonel Moran's grounds for several days. Funny people, colorful clothes, always on the move. They see the world and I just sit here and learn. So the idea grew on me to go away with them for a while. Tuesday morning, I woke up early, very early. It was still dark, but I could see them packing up their things. So it sprang to my mind, now or never. So I put on my clothes, took some money, climbed out of my window, down the tree, and ran to them as fast as I could. I spoke with them, they hesitated. I could see that, you know, they used to trouble. Some money did the trick. I gave the leader money, and they took me on. At that time, I did not at all think about all the grievance I might, because here, and it was. Grievance indeed, running away with gypsies, I say. It's all right. Go on. They were frightfully nice to me. I soon made friends with the leader's daughter, Esmeralda. <laughs> we were like sisters. With a gypsy girl? Leave her. Go on. But after three days of sleeping on straw and dining on mainly potatoes, it dawned on me that this adventure was not only an adventure, and a dead, a crazy one. I missed my school and my family. The thought of father sitting at home and wearing his head off draws me nearly crazy. So I asked the gypsies to take me back, but they have different plans. At least, their leader took me to the nearest train station and I bought a ticket to Crowborough. And I started to walk home, when I was met by Constable Oates, who was so friendly as to take me here. I am terribly sorry if I've made a mistake. You did well, very well, in returning here and telling us your complete story. So, you see, Inspector Lestrade, there is no case here. The girl wasn't kidnapped and she has returned unharmed. There is no mystery about it. Of course not, Your Grace. And even Mr. Holmes can stay assured that everything is over now. May I ask the girl a few questions? <laughs> I don't see what this might help now. Her story was full of all the information we need. And she would tell us if anything terrible happened to her. Wouldn't she? Certainly, Your Grace, but those gypsies acted against the law by taking her with them. I think... They ought to be traced and brought to book, don't you agree, Inspector Lestrade? Vagabonds and such. Yes, Holmes, they ought to be found and arrested. So perhaps Lady Margaret can recall the name of the leader? Uh, name? Yes, or a detailed description of him and his people. How, how many people were there? How many wagons? What colours were the wagons? Sir, I don't... Uh, this is... I mean, they were very colourful and he looked like... I mean, they all look the same, more or less, so, don't they? You don't know the name? His daughter's name was Esmeralda, you said? Yes, well, I slept with one wagon on straw. Yes, and what was Esmeralda's father's name? I can't! I mean, this has been going on long enough, Mr. Holmes. We have been all very patient, I think. Indeed, this has been going on long enough, my dear. You will understand that I now want to take my daughter home to Hall in this Hall, where she's obvi obviously safer than here. She will return to school as soon as her nerves allow it, and I will deal with the disobedience and her fantasies of running away myself. Perhaps I did not always take enough time for her, but I will now. Ladies, gentlemen, thank you for your help, as little as it was, and good day. Constable Oates, find out these gypsies and have them arrested. Yes, sir. Another solved case in my career. Congratulations, my dear inspector. <laughs> Do you really think so, Holmes? You heard the inspector. Yes, that's why. I mean, it's a straight. We have no more reason to stay, my dear doctor. <laughs> it was nice having you here. You caused some uproar, but yet you sharpened our senses for some of our shortcomings. Always glad to help. What's up? This cannot have been it, can it? Of course not. 
That girl's story was exactly that. The story invented to get us off the track. Did you notice her tone when she was telling it? And did you see her clothes? Much too clean and nice for a girl that has slept rough for three days in a row. On straw. And of course, the other girl's name was Esmeralda. How ridiculous! Her friend probably is the hunchback of Notre Dame. <laughs> and he didn't know the name of the leader. The whole story was a lie. That's why and how. I must return to London to make some investigations which will help us on. My going away will put everyone here at ease again. And then they make mistakes. This is why I want you to stay behind. Just take a room at the village guest house, enjoy long walks, and note everything dark that happens at the school. We will have two brilliant informers inside. Miss Beckenham and Mrs. Norton. I understand Miss Beckenham has taken quite a fancy to you. <laughs> She's a very nice person. Indeed. So perhaps you may want to go out with her while you're staying behind? How long will you be gone? I don't know yet. So I must investigate a few things, ask people of dubious reputations, questions about other dubious characters. It may take some days to find the right contact, you see. The thing about Colonel Moran living next door worries me immensely. So you think he's still... Well, of course. You never leave the organization once you're inside, and he's the most dangerous criminal in England. He's a professional killer, with no hesitation at doing his work. A perfect shot at that. So you think he has to do with the case? Did he kill Dr. It's, Wagner? It's too soon to answer your questions. Just stay on your guard and telegraph to me as soon as anything mysterious happens. My dear Watson, these are deep waters. Where there are secrets, there are lies. And where there are lies, there are dangers. Good luck. Good luck, Holmes. <laughs> pointed the matter out to Lestrade. So this is why Lestrade is lingering on, says he wants to fix some loose strings. It is all a trap for us. And they suspect us. They know it was me. We are done. Nonsense. They have no idea of the greater plan or the dimension of this plot. They think it was just a kidnapping with some blackmail perhaps, and a teacher who accidentally died because, because he got into the way. What more can they suspect? I don't know, but I have a very bad feeling. Hush. Here's someone coming. Not home special pet. Perfect. What do you mean? We lay a trap for them. Leave everything to me, just act along and as naturally as possible. Come back here, Evans. So, we can be sure that he's gone back to London. Let's try it, we'll leave within an hour, and Watson is just a senile idiot. Our way is free. And what is next? Let's meet tonight and talk about the final steps of our plan, where no one will listen to us. A safe place. And what have you got in mind? Uh, none would dare follow us on to Moran's grounds. Uh, do you know his apple tree garden? That little bench under the old tree? Perfectly well. And uh, what time? Two o'clock, when everyone is asleep. Then we will finish it all. What a pity Holmes is gone. He wouldn't know what to make of this. Perhaps they heard me come and it's all a trap, but certainly not for me. Anyway, I must tell Watson what I overheard. He can then decide what is best to be done. He is oh, 
experienced and clever after these adventures with Holmes, and he was in the army. He will know what's best. 